subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon. How to communicate about sex during sex. Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mato Tarali. I'm a relationship counsellor and clinical sexologist. So there's communication before, during and after sex. So I want to focus on during sex. So when it comes to communication during sex, a lot of people have difficulties with it, especially since you're feeling naked, vulnerable and exposed. There seems to be this magic in the air. There's this romance, you know, this mystery, this uh, specialness, a sacred quality when it comes to sex. And so they have difficulties to speak up. But you must remember that your partner is not a mind reader. Your partner doesn't know what you're feeling. And your partner may not even occur to them to ask because they themselves are shy about it. So we must take it upon ourselves to learn how to communicate because there will be moments when you will feel pain, dryness, awkwardness, discomfort, tired, uh, want to go to the toilet. You need to speak up. <laughs> okay, you need to speak up. So I'm going to group this into two different ways to speak up. The first one is verbal and the second is non-verbal. So when it comes to verbal, is it okay to at least practice becoming comfortable with these words? Faster, slower, stop, slow down, continue. These are so essential. Even if you can't form sentences, at least use these words. The bare, bare minimum, I would say. So faster, slower, stop, slow down, continue. Okay. And uh, what about um, when it comes to other things, right? So being able to say sentences, of course, is good. Like for, for instance, uh, could you move your hand more to the right? Could you like rub harder? Could you, um, um, you know, go to my neck, my my whatever, you know? So being able to form sentences, giving like feedback is really important. Um, don't tolerate the pain so that at the at the point of communication, it comes across more like a shout or more like an order, um, like, like disgust or like frustration. So being able to communicate earlier, you know, then you can actually say it in a nicer way. Or you can actually give a disclaimer at the start of the session to your partner and say, I have difficulty speaking up in the bedroom, so this is what I need from you. I'm just going to like use these uh, simple words, um, but I'm still learning how to communicate. So I would love for us to be able to talk about this so that we can I can also get some feedback of the way that I communicate uh, while we are having sex. Ask for feedback. So words, sentences, uh, feedback is really important. And then what about the possibility of using code words? Code words. So when it comes to BDSM, people who play with pain, uh, sensation and uh, power, uh, what happens is they need to be very, very intentional about the words that they use because um, it's a very like delicate, critical moment, right? When it when someone is trying to communicate to you a hard stop or their fears, for instance. So being able to use code words, um, that words that are not in our normal vocabulary, such as red, yellow, green, or red, amber, uh, green, uh, is very important. So for instance, like when you say no, no, stop, 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 like sometimes that's part of the play, you see. So it's really important to have pre-established code words. So code words can uh, be like, for instance, red, yellow, green, or anything else that you make up um, that can actually mean different things to you besides stop, slow down, and continue. It can mean different things, like for instance, um, whatever it is that you all do, like you have this uh, special nickname for this technique, for instance, you can actually communicate better uh, verbally. So these are some tips. So when it comes to non-verbal, there are people who have difficulties um, even speaking up or sometimes maybe you just really don't want to speak up so how how about having pre-established cues uh, in the body for instance like when i pull your hair or i pull your ear or you know i scratch your neck this is what i'm trying to tell you or i squeeze your butt or squeeze your hand this is what i'm trying to tell you stop or watch out or you know like i'm in pain like uh, I, I don't want to stop, I want you to continue. Can you just like try to like, you know, finish uh, because I'm starting to feel pain. So these can be little uh, non-verbal cues, uh, body cues that you can give to your partner so that you're still communicating but you're not breaking the magic of the moment, you're not breaking the spell um, in the air or something like that. Um, and it's okay, it's okay to um, not uh, speak in the bedroom if that's what you prefer or really uh, find difficulties too, but it's still important to communicate. So whether it's non-verbally or verbally. So other non-verbal ways of communicating is for instance, you're holding something in your hand, like for instance, you drop the ball, let's say for instance, you're being gagged or blindfolded or something, like you can't really speak. 
So then like holding certain uh, cues in your hands, like for instance, uh, you know, like I'm like, you know, this thumbs up is like, okay, continue. This is like, uh, you know, like um, whatever warning or two or three, you know, three chances or so something like that. Uh, cues that you can uh, form with your fingers, uh, with uh, certain body parts, uh, with certain objects, for instance, like a ball or like a handkerchief or like uh, holding something like a, uh, uh, something that squeaks for instance you can you can do all that so I hope this has given you some ideas about how you can communicate in the bedroom uh, above and beyond that of course uh, I want to share um, some questions that you can uh, maybe like ask for feedback right so uh, how about the idea of open and closed ended questions so some people may not want to like go into this whole like essay you know uh, of how they're feeling but maybe at that moment uh, they they are okay to like give you a little bit of hits up like for instance are you okay are you in pain can i continue uh, is this good for you so all your partner needs to do is just say yes or no or even just nod their head that's non-verbal um, but then maybe um, there are some people who really love talking in the bedroom like hey, how is it what do you like about it you know uh, what else should we try so you have to actually really look at your partner's preferences. Is it open-ended questions that works better for them or is it closed-ended questions that works better for them? So I hope this video has given you some um, for, for thought and I'm just going to summarize quickly. Two ways to communicate, verbal and non-verbal. Um, with verbal, you can use words, you can use sentences, you can use code words, you can use open and closed-ended questions. With non-verbal, you can uh, use um, tag to certain body parts, you can use your fingers, you can use um, your expression, you can use uh, objects uh, to actually represent what you're trying to communicate. So this has been Martha doing this video for She The People TV. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any videos by us.